hey, listening squirrels. My teeth may just fly out of my mouth. I don't usually have this problem. I usually get them glued in well enough in the morning that are that they're not slipping around. But we got slippage happening. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <clears throat> and I'm praying I can stay awake. As usual. We'll see. Good morning, she said. Are you coming to live here or are you visiting? I'm visiting, said Tuppence. I have an aunt here. My husband's with her now. We thought, perhaps, two people at once was rather too much. That was very thoughtful of you, said the old lady. She took a sip of milk appreciatively. I wonder... No, I think it's quite all right. Wouldn't you like something? Some tea or some coffee, perhaps? Let me ring the bell. They're very obliging here. No, thank you, said Tuppence, really. Or a glass of milk, perhaps? It's not poison today. No, no, not even that. We shan't be stopping very much longer. Well, if you're quite sure, but it wouldn't be any trouble, you know. Nobody ever thinks anything is any trouble here unless, I mean, you ask for something quite impossible. I dare say the aunt we're visiting sometimes asks for quite impossible things, said Tuppence. She's a Miss Fanshawe, she added. Oh, Miss Fanshawe, said the old lady. Oh, oh, yes. Something seemed to be restraining her, but Tuppence said cheerfully, She's rather a tartar, I should imagine. She always has been. Oh, yes, indeed she is. I used to have an aunt myself, you know, who was very like that, especially as she grew older. But we're all quite fond of Miss Fanshawe. She can be very, very amusing if she likes about people, you know. Yes, I dare say she could be, said Tuppence. She reflected a moment or two, considering Aunt Ada in this new light. Very acid, said the old lady. My name is Lancaster, by the way, Mrs. Lancaster. My name's Beersford, said Tuppence. I'm afraid, you know, one does enjoy a bit of malice now and then. Her description of some of the other guests here and things she says about them. Well, you know, one oughtn't, of course, to find it funny, but one does. Have you been living here long? A good while now, yes. Let me see. Seven years? Eight years? Yes, it must be more like eight years, she sighed. One loses touch with things, and people, too. Any relations have left... I have left, live abroad. That must be rather sad. No, not really. I didn't care for them very much. Indeed, I, I didn't even know them well. I had a bad illness, a very bad illness, and I was alone in the world, so they thought it was better for me to live in a place like this. I think I'm very lucky to have come here. They're so kind and thoughtful. And the gardens are really beautiful. I know myself that I shouldn't like to be living on my own because I do get very confused sometimes, you know. Very confused, she tapped her forehead. I get confused here. I mix things up. I don't always remember properly the things that have happened. I'm sorry, said Tuppence. I suppose one always has to have something, doesn't one? Some illnesses are very painful. We have two poor women living here with very bad rheumatoid arthritis. They suffer terribly. So I think perhaps it doesn't matter so much if one gets well. Just a little confused about what happened and where and who it was and all that sort of thing, you know. At any rate, it's not painful physically. No, I think perhaps you're quite right, said Tuppence. The door opened and a girl in a white overall came in with a little silver with a little tray with a coffee pot on it and a plate with two biscuits, which she set down at Tuppence's side. Miss Packard thought you might care for a cup of coffee, she said. 
Oh, thank you, said Tuppence. The girl went out again, and Mrs. Lancaster said, There you see. Very thoughtful, aren't they? Yes, indeed. Tuppence poured out her coffee and began to drink it. The two women sat in silence, silence for some time. Tuppence offered the plate of biscuits, but the old lady shook her head. No, thank you, dear. I just like my milk. I just like my milk plain. <laughs> she put down the empty glass and leaned back in her chair, her eyes half closed. Tuppence thought that perhaps this was the moment in the morning when she took a little nap. So she remained silent. Suddenly, however, Mrs. Lancaster seemed to jerk herself awake again. Her eyes opened. She looked at Tuppence and said, I see you're looking at the fireplace. Oh, was I? said Tuppence, slightly startled. Yes, I wondered. She leaned toward and lowered her voice. Excuse me? Was it your poor child? <laughs> that was the title. I was wondering about that. Tuppence, slightly taken aback, hesitated. N uh, I, n no, I don't think so, she said. I wondered, I thought perhaps you'd come for that reason. Someone ought to come sometime. Perhaps they will. And looking at the fireplace the way you did, that's where it is, you know, behind the fireplace. Oh, said Tuppence, uh, is it? Always the same time, said Miss Lancaster in, an, in a low voice. Always the same time of day. She looked up at the clock on the mantelpiece. Tuppence looked up also. Ten past eleven, said the old lady. Ten past eleven. Yes, it's always the same time every morning, she sighed. People didn't understand. I told them what I knew, but they wouldn't believe me. Tuppence was relieved that at that moment the door opened and Tommy came in. <clears throat> came in. Tuppence rose to her feet. Here I am. I'm ready. She went towards the door, turning her head to say goodbye, Mrs. Lancaster. How did you get on? She asked Tommy as they emerged into the hall. After you left, said Tommy, like a house on fire. I seem to have had a bad effect on her, don't I, said Tuppence, rather cheering in a way. Why cheering? Well, at my age, said Tuppence, and what with my neat and respectable and slightly boring appearance, it's nice to think that you might be taken for a depraved woman of fatal sexual charm. <laughs> Idiot, said Tommy. Pinching her arm affectionately, who were you hobnobbing with? She looked a very nice, fluffy old lady. She was very nice, said Tuppence. A dear old thing, I think, but unfortunately, bats. Bats? Yes, seemed to think there was a dead child behind the fireplace or something of the kind. She asked me if it was my poor child. Rather unnerving, said Tommy. I suppose there must be... Some people who are slightly batty here, as well as normal elderly relatives with nothing but age to trouble them still, she looked nice. Oh, she was nice, said Tuppence. Nice and very sweet, I think. I wonder what exactly her fancies are. And why? Mrs. Packard appeared again suddenly. Goodbye, Mrs. Beersford. I hope they brought you some coffee. Oh, yes, they did. Thank you. Well, it's been very kind of you to come, I'm sure, said Miss Packard. Turning to Tommy, she said, And I know Mrs. Miss Fanshawe has enjoyed your visit very much. I'm sorry she was rude to your wife. I think that I gave her a lot of pleasure, too, said Tuppence. Yes, you're quite right. She does like being rude to people. <laughs> She's unfortunately rather good at it. And so she practices the art as often as she can, said Tommy. You're very understanding, both of you, said Miss Packard. The old lady I was talking to, said Tuppence, Mrs. Lancaster, I think she said her name was. Oh, yes, Mrs. Lancaster, we're all very fond of her. She's a, she's a little... 
peculiar? Well, she has her fancies, said Miss Packard indulgently. We have several people here who have fancies. Quite harmless ones, but well, there they are. Things that they believe have happened to them or to other people. We try not to take any notice, not to encourage them, just play it down. I think really it's just an exercise in, imagin in imagination, a sort of, uh, dang, a sort of fantasy they like to live in. Something exciting or something sad and tragic. It doesn't matter which, but no persecution mania, thank goodness. These words are divided in weird places. That would never do. Well, that's over, said Tommy with the sighs. He got into the car. We shan't need to come again for at least six months. <laughs> but they didn't need to go and see her in six months for three weeks later, and Ada died in her sleep. Poor Aunt Ada. Okay, that was it for chapter two. Chapter three is called A Funeral. I don't know how much I'll get read, but we'll do what we can. I forgot to bring my drink in here, of course. Okay, three, a funeral. Funerals are rather sad, aren't they, said Tuppence. They had just returned from attending Aunt Ada's funeral, which had entailed a long and troublesome railway journey since the burial had taken place at the country village in Lincolnshire, where most of Aunt Ada's family and forebears had been buried. What do you expect a funeral to be, said Tommy reasonably, a scene of mad gaiety? Well, it could be in some places, said Tuppence. I mean, the Irish enjoy a wake, don't they? They, had a, they have a lot of kenning and wailing first, and then drink plenty of drink, and a sort of mad whoopee drink, she added with a look. Let's see, with a look towards the sideboard. Tommy went over to it and duly brought back what he considered appropriate, in this case, a white lady. Never heard of that drink. Ah, that's more like it, said Tuppence. She took off her black hat and threw it across the room and slipped off her long black coat. I hate mourning, she said. It always smells of it of mothballs because it's been laid up somewhere. You don't need to go on wearing you don't need to go on wearing mourning. It's only to go to the funeral in, said Tommy. Oh no, I know that. In a minute or two I'm going to go up and put on a scarlet jersey just to cheer things up. You can make me another white lady. Really, Tuppence, I had no idea that funerals would bring out this party feeling. <laughs> I said funerals were sad, said Tuppence, when she reappeared a moment or two later, wearing a brilliant cherry red dress with a ruby, with a ruby and diamond lizard pinned to the shoulder of it, because it's funerals like Aunt Ada's that are sad. I mean elderly people and not many, not many flowers. Not a lot of people sobbing and sniffing round. Someone old and lonely who won't be missed, who won't be missed much. I should have thought it would be much easier for you to stand than it would be if it were my funeral, for instance. That's where you're entirely wrong, said Tuppence. I don't particularly want to think of your funeral because I'd much rather, I'd much prefer to die before you do. But I mean, if I were going to your funeral at any rate, it would be an orgy of grief. I should take a lot of handkerchiefs with black borders. Well, I hadn't thought of black borders, but it's a nice idea. And besides, the burial service is rather lonely. Makes you feel 
makes you feel uplifted. Real grief is real. It makes you feel awful, but it does something to you. I mean, it works it out like perspiration. <laughs> really, Tuppence, I find your remarks about my decease and the effect it will have upon your upon you an exceedingly bad taste. I don't like it. Let's forget about funerals. I agree. Let's forget. The poor old bean's gone, said, <coughs> said Tommy, and she went peacefully and without suffering, so. Uh, let's leave it at that. I'd better clear up all these, I suppose. He went over to the writing table and ruffled through some papers. Now, where did I put Mr. Rockberry's letter? Who's Mr. Rockberry? Oh, you mean the lawyer who wrote to you? Yes, about winding up her affairs. I seem to be the only one of the family left by, by now. Pity she hadn't got a fortune to leave you, said Tuppence. If she had had a fortune, she'd have left it to that cat's home, said Tommy. The legacy that she's left them in her will will be... Uh, let's see, she's left them. In her will will pretty much... Wait a minute. Will pretty well eat up all the spare cash. There won't be much left to come to me. Uh... Why does my nose always itch when I read or talk to y'all? Not that I needed or wanted anyway. Was she so fond of cats? I don't know. I suppose so. I never heard her mention them, I believe, said Tommy. Thoughtfully, she used to get rather a lot of fun coming through. Uh, rather a lot of fun. Wait a minute. Starting to read crazy words now. Which is funny. I don't know. I suppose I never heard her mention them, I believe. She used to get rather a lot of fun out of saying to old friends of hers when they came to see her, I've left you a little something in my will, dear, or this brooch that you're so fond of, I've left you in my will. She didn't actually leave anything to anyone except the cat's home. I bet she got rather a kick out of that, said Tuppence. I can just see her saying all the things you told me to a lot of her old friends, her so-called old friends, because I don't suppose they were pe don't suppose they were people she really liked at all. She just enjoyed leading them up the garden path. I must say she was an old devil, wasn't she? Wasn't she, Tommy? Only in a funny sort of way she likes... Only in a funny sort of way one likes her for being an old devil. It's something to be able... Something to be able to get some fun out of life when you're old and stuck away in a home. Shall we have... Uh, shall we have to go to Sunny Ridge? Where, where's their, where's the other letter? The one from Miss Rock, the one from Miss, Miss Packard. Oh, yes, here it is. I put it with Rockberries. Yes, she says there are certain things there, I gather, which apparently are now my property. She took some furniture with her, you know, when she went to live there. And, of course, there were her personal effects. Clothes are things. Mm. Oh, shoot. Clothes and things like that. I suppose somebody will have to go through them. And letters and things. I'm her ex. ex I'm her executor, so I suppose it's up to me. I don't suppose there's anything we want, really, is there? Except there's a small desk there that I've always liked. Belonged to old Uncle William, I believe. Well, you might take that as a memento, said Tuppence. Otherwise, I suppose we just send the things to be auctioned. So you don't really need to go there at all, said Tommy. 
Oh, I think I'd like to go there, said Tuppence. You'd like to? Why? Won't it be rather a bore to you? What, looking through her things? No, I don't think so. I think I've got a certain amount of curiosity. Old letters and antique jewelry are always interesting. And I think when ought to look uh, when ought to look at them oneself, not just send them to auction or let strangers go through them. No, we'll go and look through the things. Through the things and see if there's anything we would like to keep and otherwise settle up. Why do you really want to go? You've got some other reason, haven't you? Oh dear, said Tuppence. It's an awful thing. It's awful being married to someone who knows too much about one. So you have got another reason? Not a real one. Come on, Tuppence, you're not really so fond of turning over people's belongings. That, I think, is my duty, said Tuppence firmly. No, the only... <clears throat> Doggone. Uh... No, the only other reason is, come on, cough it up. I'd rather like to see that other old pussy again. What, the one who thought there was a dead child behind the fireplace? <laughs> yes, said Tuppence. I'd like to talk to her. Oh, she's talking about a real cat. Uh, I'd like to know what is in her mind when she said all those things. Uh, Lord, y'all, I'm, I'm flaking out, so I better stop <laughs> and start reading crazy, crazy stuff that's not there. Oh, Lordy. I wish I could read a good 30 minutes each time anyway. It comes from these doggone meds I take. But I have to take them. Then I'm going to talk to the doc about them, see if there's something else I can take. Sick of this. Love y'all. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. And hope to see you tomorrow. <laughs> Live at five. Did y'all see my squealing squirrel mail? This stuff is so soft. And Sunita's so sweet. She sent me three of these. Doesn't it look like unforgettable? I think it's the polo color and unfor I'm gonna have to find that and put these together. And this has two hundred and seventy nine yards and I think Unforgettable has two seventy, maybe close. And it's a number four. And uh, let's see what it's made out of. And y'all get a little jump start. <laughs> On the fiber of the day. Uh, yeah, 100% acrylic. And it's just called Autumn. I think I said that. 279 lovely yards. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And she sent me three. And then I went to Michael's and hoped they would have these on the shelf. But I did find two other colors. Just three of each. Which is what I would have gotten. So I wiped those out. Now I'm working on another do-rag. <laughs> I had started this one already. And this thing that could be done, but I just started another whole skein. So this thing may be a ginormous shawl. 
I'll see y'all later. Love you bunches. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Bye-bye.